All right, so for this part, um, as you can see, it's prior and posterior distributions for me and the standard deviation. So what I would do is I will first assume that the mean is unknown and standard deviation is known. So we're going to have set of um, how to put a prior and how to derive the posterior for that case. And then we're going to move to the second case where the mean is known and fixed, and we're going to treat standard deviation as random. And then how to how to do how to do a prior and posterior derivation for that will be the second part. So I'm going to do it one by one. So uh, from the proportion chapter or lecture that we we did previously, we know that in order to um, do a, a Bayesian inference, the procedure has three general steps. We first of all express empty about the unknown proportion P before sampling. So that's the prior. Okay, you have to come up with the prior distribution. We looked at the discrete and the continuous case. And uh, step two is take the sample and record the observed proportion, and that was the data and likelihood function, which is through a binomial model for the proportional case. And step three is use base rules to sharpen and update the previous opinion about P, and that, that gives us the posterior. So what we're going to do here, uh, and just a quick summary of what we did uh, for, for the continuous beta prior and its conjugate, so you go to a posterior distribution, which is also a beta. And then we looked at how, how um, a, the mean is, uh, like the posterior mean is average, is weighted average of the prior mean and sample mean, et cetera, et cetera. So we did all of that, as well as um, some other inference, like credible interval, hypothesis testing, et cetera, et cetera. So, the question now is for a normal model, if you have YI, IID from the same normal mu sigma. So I already said that the data model is chosen is normal. That's the one that we we'll work with. So what to do with two parameters and how to specify priors. Are uh, conjugate priors available at all? So those are the questions we're trying to answer. So um, here we're going to fix uh, one for now and work on the other one. So before doing that, so just the problem right now, both are unknown. And then you will know that, so remember, we have the joint density, the product that we wrote before. If both parameters are unknown, we're going to try to express the joint PDF as the likelihood function of the two unknown parameters. Okay, so generically, you can write L mu sigma, right? And if you have two unknown, you can get a joint prior distribution. So generically, you can write pi, mu, and sigma together. And then eventually, you will try to derive a joint posterior. Okay, so this is, say, if both are unknown. The procedure that we learned before um, for, I think, for the beta uh, binomial case can uh, help us. I mean, the experience over there, this is general procedure. You have the likelihood. You have the prior, and then you get to the posterior. And this is the usual notation that we'll be using. So let's start with assuming only mean is unknown. So sigma is known here. Right? So like I said, because there are two parameters in the model. One is known, only the other one is unknown. It becomes a one-parameter model. So when you write it, as you can see, so this is still the IID, that's fine. And because sigma now is known, the likelihood can be written in terms of the only unknown parameter mu. So now you can see that I sort of got to like, get rid of the sigma because sigma is known, okay? And I express it in terms of mu over here. So if now sigma is known, only mu is unknown, we're going to, in order to do the Bayesian inference, we're going to need a prior for mu. And as you can see, I was trying to make sure that we always know that sigma is known. So I always put it after the conditional sign. So, I mean, you can, you can also do this, but I think sometimes it's a little bit misleading. So just make sure that we know there are two parameters in this model, but it's mostly that right now we're assuming one is fixed and it's, we just put in the like after the conditional sign. So the prior distribution for mu, we write as mu given sigma. And then of course the posterior now, not only given the data, but also the known sigma. Okay, so this is a good practice right now in this unit, you might not see it, but then later when we start doing 
two unknown parameters, like make sure that you know what is being conditioned. I think it's a good practice for you to see how things work over there. So I try to keep consistent. So this all makes sense, right? You start with the likelihood. Likelihood is in terms of the only only unknown parameter because mu is the only unknown. So so the join is L mu. And then you have pi mu, uh, L mu, sorry, and pi mu, and then pi mu given data and uh, the known parameter. All right, so the test is straightforward. Now is what we're going to do, what, how, what we can do in order to, to get the um, Bayesian inference working. So for this special case, um, I'm just going to say out loud at the beginning that the normal prior, if you give a normal prior for mu, it will be a conjugate prior. Okay, so the unknown parameter is mu. Okay, if you give a normal prior for it, later you're going to be able to derive its posterior to be another normal. Okay, so that will involve some derivation, obviously, and uh, that's what we're going to focus on um, in a minute. But for now, I want to walk through the general procedure so we all get familiar again with uh, the prior distribution of sampling density and then how to how to get the posterior. So. Conjugate prior is if you start with the family of distribution and you arrive at um, the posterior from the same uh, family of distribution, you come up with a conjugate prior. So here, sampling density we know <coughs> it's normal, okay? And we're only looking at mu as the unknown. So I'm saying that. If you have a data model to be IID normal, if you fix sigma and then only make inference about mu, then if you put a normal prior on mu, you're gonna get to a normal posterior for mu. Okay. So this case, I mean, um, because both the data density as well as the prior distribution are normal, so sometimes it's easy to get confused. But just like in the beta binomial case, the data model is binomial. And then the unknown parameter p, we put a beta prior. And then the conjugacy guarantees us a beta posterior distribution for the unknown parameter. Okay. So here, just want you to say it again, we have a IID joint normal density for the data. And we have only our one unknown parameter, which is the mean of the normal distribution, which is mu. And that's the one that we want to make inference about. And saying the normal conjugate prior for mu means that if we give a normal prior distribution for this unknown parameter mu, you're going to arrive at a normal conjugate posterior distribution for mu. Okay? And the good thing, or I should say like the appealing features of this setup with conjugate priors we saw before is that we know exactly what the um, so, I mean, what the posterior distribution is for the unknown parameter, so where it's much easier for us to summarize the posterior. Okay? Just like the beta case, we can use R beta to simulate, we can use P beta, Q beta, D beta, all that, in order to summarize the posterior plot, whatever you want to do. And then as we can see here, that because normal posterior will be a conjugate, I mean, Conjugate normal is a conjugate prior for this mu. So when you get to the posterior distribution for mu to be a normal distribution, you are able to summarize it pretty easily as well. And so this is what we, um, I mean, to, to easy start. All right. So I'm going to show you the results first. It's a little bit complicated. I agree, uh, but we're going to like slow down in a minute to, to look at the detail. But I do want to show you that. If you have a prior distribution for mu, which we use, so notice that these are parameters. These are parameters for the prior, okay? And mu themselves, and mu itself is a parameter. But now, these are the parameters for the prior. Okay? So make sure that you know the levels and then make sure that each one is corresponding to, to the right location. So if you have a prior distribution, normal mu zero, sigma zero for the unknown parameter mu. And if your data model or the sampling density is joint IID of normal mu sigma, and sigma is known, then you are able to arrive at a normal posterior. So here, the only unknown is mu, so that goes before the conditional sign. 
and the data is being conditioned. This, we call it phi, is the precision. Okay, the definition is phi is one over variance. Okay, so we're using this for simplicity of derivation, but it's the same thing. I mean, it's the reciprocal of the variance. Okay? So I'm using phi uh, for the representation, and we're going to see why in a minute. All right, so because of this deterministic relationship, I mean, you know sigma, you know phi. So I put phi um, here after the conditional sign, and then you arrive at a normal distribution with a new mean and a new standard deviation. Okay. A little bit complicated at the moment, but we're gonna see it step by step. And then we are also later, we'll be able to see that this is a weighted average of the prior mean and the data mean as well. Okay, so that's another, I think, appealing feature of understanding um, the one parameter model for, for the mean. All right, so before we get to the derivation, I do want to show you quickly if you want to do any kind of um, inference, you're able to do that because as we know, now you know exactly what the posterior distribution is, right? And what you will know, so I wrote it, I highlighted it in red, that so sigma and sigma zero, those are known. So sigma is fixed, you're gonna assume, like you're gonna assume a number, you're gonna use a number for that. And sigma zero, is the prior like the parameter for the prior which is going to be fixed mu zero is fixed as well i should say so all of this are known so phi zero which is from sigma zero phi which is from sigma you know that you know the prior mean mm -hmm. you know the sample size and if you also know y bar which is the sample mean as you can see it comes into play in here if you know all of these quantities you know exactly what the mu is Okay, so that's how we mean that you can use this R norm function to generate any kind of posterior draws from it. And then summarize. So if you want to do any kind of inference simulation, that's the one, uh, one approach we talked about in, in previous chapter, then you can do random draws and then like if you draw large number, large enough number of times, you're able to approximate the analytical solution. But of course, you can also use what the P norm, Q norm, and D norm for other ways of summarization. Okay? And the key is what? We know exactly the posterior mean, posterior standard deviation, because we know all of the terms. Okay. The terms right now, obviously, uh, are in a pretty complicated way. Right now, I don't expect any of you to know exactly why, but I want you to see that all of those will be known because it's from the prior, it's from the data. I should say from the data here, okay? because of N and Y bar. Now, once we have that, we know exactly what the posterior mean and the posterior standard deviation is, then we can summarize. And so you know, and then that will be a appealing feature. So, just as a quick demo, if so for the particular data set that I've been working with here, you're able to say, so what I'm doing here is I was, so you see that I set the prior mean and the prior standard deviation. So then I can get the prior position, which is one over sigma uh, zero squared. Mm -hmm. And then I get Y bar, that's from the data, right? Y bar. And also get the sample size, and also get the phi, which is one over sigma squared. Okay. So I'm using the sample standard deviation for that. So this two lines, three lines, I should say, but it's really just two, is trying to get the posterior mean and the posterior standard deviation. Okay. That's just following the formula that I showed you earlier on the slide. And then once you get all of that, you can do R norm, right? You set the mean to be the posterior mean, the, st the standard deviation to be the posterior standard deviation, and then you're able to summarize your posterior distribution. So this is the case of using approximation through simulation, okay? But as you can see, once you know mu n and sdn, then instead of using R norm, 
you can do Q norm and P norm and D norm to do any kind of other inference. So that's what I would like all of us to do on Thursday. I'll provide some questions and then you will, uh, you can follow those questions and follow what we covered in order to do both the exact solution and the simulated solution to your practice of using R as well as understanding that if you know the exact posterior distribution, then both approaches should get you very similar results. Okay. Cool. So this is, um, I would say, um, the easy part because now we know that, okay, we know how to do the posterior, like we know exactly what the posterior distribution is. And then we can summarize and then the inference is pretty straightforward from there. So now the question is how come we can come to a normal posterior in this way. Okay, so I guess um, we will be um, start doing a little bit um, algebra, mostly algebra, yeah, algebra exercise over here, and I want to walk you through uh, some of the key steps. So this, uh, knowing how to do the basic um, derivation, I think can help you a lot in terms of understanding uh, Bayesian inference, and then um, say later on, not in our course, but later if you either taking courses or trying to implement more complicated models, the basic, um, I mean, derivation skills as well as recognizing what is the, what is the terms, how to uh, combine terms, those will uh, help you to go much further in terms of doing, doing Bayesian inference in, with such sophisticated models, okay? All right, so we're doing mu unknown. And sigma is known. In place. Okay. The only unknown parameter. I'm actually going to pause.